Sir Sidney Gunn Monroe left his native Grenada in 1949 to work in St. Vincent as a doctor for six months. He stayed for nearly 50 years and became the head of state in his adopted country. In those days, of course, there was a Windward Island. There was one governor who was a resident in Grenada, and I was then a part of the Windward Islands Medical Service. So one doctor could be transferred to another island quite easily. simply. The medical superintendent and the female practitioner were the only staff he met at the Kingstown General Hospital when he arrived. He soon became a doc of all trades, dispensing medical care over a wide span of disciplines, 24 hours a day. I am pleased to say that during those, those years, there were very few complaints about the hospital. Uh, the public on the whole were very appreciative and supportive of what we were doing in the hospital. And it was a great pleasure to me to have worked in St. Vincent at the hospital for those 22 years. He qualified as a surgeon in England and worked in that country for four years before returning to the Caribbean. Sir Sidney worked under trying circumstances at a time when high salaries and the private practice were not common. Uh, the, the government set the fee, the surgical fee for a major operation in patients above in the upper part of the Graham wing was $60, BV dollars, of which the government took 25%. So the biggest fee I ever earned as a surgeon in this hospital was 45 EC dollars. Sir Sidney recalls that his highest reward was for a surgery on a cat brought to him by vet Dr. Earl Kirby. Anyway, the cat survived and um, I received a, a present of a case of whiskey from the owner of the cat. And as, as far as I was concerned, that's the biggest fee I ever earned in St. Vincent because I didn't have to pay income tax on it either. <laughs> so that was it. He retired from the government service in 1971 after 22 years. But he continued his community service even after that time. When I retired in 71, for the next year, 72, I had a private office in Kingston, just opposite partly in my. And then government asked me if I would come and take the job of a medical officer in Beckway, which I did. So from 72 to 76, I was medical officer in Beckway. And then in 77, as you know, I was asked to take the job of governor, and I moved there until it became governor general in 79. I retired from that in 85. Now, all the time that I was governor and governor general, I still give my services at the hospital if they wanted it. Dr. Gunn Monroe became governor of the Associated State of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in 1977. He was made the first governor general of the country after independence in 1979. This was the high point of his distinguished public life. I suppose one of the reasons why I was invited to take that post by Mr. Cato and his, his cabinet was I think they thought I was someone who had the respect of the population of Sydney. I think that was, uh, I don't think you need any particular skills to be a governor general, I think, or governor. I think once you've had a general, reasonably good education. But I think probably the, their choice was determined by the fact that they th thought that I would be someone that the majority of the people in this community would respect. I could only answer, I could give them that question. You enjoyed that conversation? Yes, I did. It is uh, oh, for. Uh, I'd enjoyed it. it. It's a bit frustrating at times when you can't make a more positive input into what is going on, you know. But I think, on the whole, I, I enjoyed it. But there was, and there were had opportunities that I may not have had otherwise. I met a lot of interesting people over the years. And so I certainly did enjoy that part of it. Sir Sidney Gunn Monroe now lives quietly on Beckway, enjoying a well-deserved retirement.